Good morning. Good morning, good day, and welcome to those of you that are here in this room and those of you that are joining us from around the world, literally from around the world, wherever you're joining us from at this time, we're happy to have you doing so. And I am grateful to God for what he is doing through this medium. When I hear the different testimonies, the different things that people are sharing based on their experience, and it's life transforming experiences, divine God encounter that they're experiencing that is changing their life to the point where it is impossible for them to even go back to being what they were before. As I said a couple of Sundays ago, or maybe it was Sunday Pass, I think of the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And I remember when I got born again in 1987 and I started reading the Bible, and there were languages, there were words and, you know, things that I did not fully grasp being in the culture that I grew up and how we would see things and view things. And as I started studying the scriptures, I understood that Romans chapter 12 was written for us to see and understand it clearly from the concept of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. So in Romans chapter 12, as it is stated, that if we understand when we come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are in this world, but we're not of it. And what puts us in that position to function like that? It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And the mercies, to understand what the mercies that he's talking about looks like, you go back to chapter 11, especially chapter 11, when Paul talks about what God actually did to the people of Israel. He caused them to stumble. God on purpose caused them to be blinded so that he may bring the Gentile in, the Gentiles in, because Israel is the true olive tree. We are engrafted branches into that olive tree. So Paul picks up on that and he said, therefore, that the mercies that we have now experienced from God, he says, I'm beseeching you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Sacrifice before was always killed. But now he says, God wants living sacrifice. Not sheep, not a cow, not the animals that we read about in the Old Testament, but we become that living sacrifice. And then he goes on to verse 2, and it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the very renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the word that is used for transformation is the word metamorpho, from which we get the English word metamorphis, that we know takes place only with the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And when it goes into the cocoon and the chrysalis and everything is playing out, the, it, the caterpillar literally becomes liquefied. And the liquid transform, takes on a new nature. And that which is now take on, the nature that it now takes on, it becomes what it takes on, a butterfly. The butterfly has absolutely nothing of the caterpillar in it. And God put that in the scripture on purpose. God, God created the butterfly for us to have a clear image of what our life can look like when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We see a messed up church today, a church that is falsely representing Christ, and many people accept it. And someone like me, when I speak, they hate me. I do not care. I am here to represent the standard of the living God. You can hate me as you want, say what you want, walk away, reject me. It doesn't matter. Truth is truth. The caterpillar 
becoming a butterfly, the butterfly never goes back to being a caterpillar. It doesn't touch anything that is of the caterpillar. Why do we see people say that they're of God? We're still playing in the world, playing with sin. And, and, and people accept it and say, oh, we're human. The caterpillar, once it becomes a butterfly, the butterfly is not saying, oh, I'm a caterpillar. I'm a caterpillar, so sometimes I'm going to go back, you know, doing caterpillar stuff. No, it does only what a butterfly does. It becomes a pollinator. A caterpillar is a devourer. The butterfly, he is important to the food chain. And that's what he does until the very day it dies. When you're born again, you become a son of God. You live as a son of God until Jesus Christ takes you home. Whether your body expire or you live to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Period. We're in class. And at some point you have to return in your work so that I will grade it. And I know what the standard is. And you think I'm going to let you pass because I like you? There's a standard. There's a standard. Sorry to start out so strong. But my God. <sighs> Many people see the church today as a circus, as a joke. Because we have walked away from the living God and we're no longer representing him. We're representing ourselves. We're living in a world today where people talk about truth. But truth is not governed by the standard of God anymore in the idea of where, where the idea of truth is concerned, even where the church is concerned. Truth has become the, the measurement for truth today in the present world we're living it's you and I. So we literally get to the point where we, you hear this talk. You hear it in the shows, in the movies. We hear it on television and we hear it in conversation with people saying, I'm going to speak my truth. I don't want to hear truth. I don't want to hear it. Keep it. I don't want to hear it. Because your truth will put me in bondage. But the truth of God... It sets you free. It makes you free. So I'm not even here to tell you my truth. You don't want it. I promise you, you do not want it. You want the truth that comes from the living God. It gives life. It gives light. It gives hope. It gives comfort. It gives strength. And, and, and I can go on. When you receive it, wow. So, it's really good to be here. It's good to see those of you that are here in this room and those of you that are watching online. And as I was talking to a brother from Atlanta, uh, I think it was on Friday or Thursday, and he was saying, Pastor, you know, we're see seeing you on the television, but you can't see us, and even though I'm hearing you, I just wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one connection with you. So I know that you're there watching me, you're hearing me. I can't see you, but by faith, I believe that you're there and you're hearing and you're receiving. And so I pray that this will not be a religious program, a religious experience for you, but one which is of truth and that your life will be touched in such a way and transformed in such a way that you become like the butterfly. You become like the butterfly.
never going back to being a caterpillar. And the, butterf the, the, the caterpillar is creepy, don't it, ladies? If any male say yes, I slap them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but for ladies, you know, caterpillar is creepy, it's ugly, slimy, but you put out your hand for the butterfly. So beautiful. Wow. When we were outside of Christ, our life was ugly. It was, it was a mess. But now we're in Christ. We become the very light of the world, the salt of the earth. Paul say, we are the aroma of life. Wow. A sweet-smelling sacrifice. When God looks at our lives, what is coming from it, it gives off a sweet aroma in Christ. In Christ. We're going to continue our reading in the book of John. And after that, we will pray together and continue moving forward, doing whatever we need to do in the moment, whatever the Spirit will continue to say and do. So yesterday we read chapter 9. So today is chapter 10. And it has 42 verses. So we're going to divide it in two. Who was the first person that came up? You kind of both came up? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Well... So one, you read 20, the first 21 verses, and then she'll pick up. And those of you that are watching, as I've said from time to time, if you're in a position to take your Bibles, please do so and read along with us. Listen to the Word. Look at the Word. It's important. Um, there are some of you who will not be able to do it. There, you know, but, so if you, but if you're in a position to do so, please. And we're reading from John chapter 10. Those of you that are listening by radio... If you're able to also do that, please do so. Go ahead, my brother. Hmm. There's no power. The battery died. Oh, okay. Power comes now. Yeah. Look like it needed my touch. <laughs> Morning. Yes. <laughs> Most assuredly, I said to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climb up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. <laughs> wow. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he call his own sheep by name and lead them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. Yes. And the sheep follows him. The sheep follow him. Mm -hmm. For they know his voice. Wow. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let us use this illustration but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus, then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came 
before me are thieves and robbers. <laughs> but the sheep didn't but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will save he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Yes. The the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life yes. and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Yes. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, <laughs> sees the wolf coming and leave the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling <laughs> and does not care about the sheep. Mm. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Oh, thank you, Lord. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Mm. Them also I must bring. Yes. And they will hear my voice. And they will be one flock and one shepherd. Mm. Therefore, my father loved me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Thank you, Lord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. <laughs> yes. This command I gave, this command I have received from my father. Therefore, there was a division again among mm -hmm. the Jews because of these saying. And many of them said, he has a demon <laughs> and is mad. Wow. Who do you listen? Why do you <laughs> listen to him? Others said, these are not the words <laughs> of one who has a demon. Wow. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Yes. Wow. 22? We're going to stop at 21. Yes. <laughs> now, it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solom on Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. Hmm. My sheep hear my voice, Opus and Lord. I know them, Opus. and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Wow. Thank my you. Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up the stones again to the stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy and because you, being a man, make yourself God. Hmm. Jesus answered them, 
It is not written in your law, I said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came (laughs) and the scripture cannot be broken, Mm. do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God? If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do through you, do not believe me. Believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. (laughs) And he went away again beyond the Jordan to a place where John was baptizing at first And there he stayed. Then many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about this man were true. And many believed in him there. Thank you. Wow. I'm going to ask you to stand with me for a minute or so as we pray together. As I said yesterday, um, the chapter that was read, um, chapters nine, uh, I mean, the, the, this, especially even the book of John, I, I value every scripture in the Bible very highly. But there, there are certain scriptures, there are certain passages, there are certain book. Like in the New Testament, um, when you read the letters that the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul wrote, wrote to the church, Ephesians is a very unique book. Um, when we're able to unlock the mysteries that are tied up there for us, it's not hidden from us, but for us. And yesterday, as it was bread, there were certain things that just jump out. I'm, I'm reading this for years. Um, as long as I'm walking with the Lord for 38 years, I've been reading the Bible. And I don't take it lightly. And they're reading again. You know, they're reading. And um, Brother Patrick reading the first portion of it. And get to verse 13. Jesus started talking about the good shepherd and the the ireland then in verse 13 he says the ireland flees because you know they see the wolf coming and he said the reason why they flee they flees because he is an ireland working just for money and does not care about the sheep The present church is filled with that today. You may say, oh, you know, you're criticizing. I'm criticizing on on, on the truth. This This is not me criticizing without understanding, without knowledge. A lot of us do that. We criticize things without knowing. And when you criticize something, you should have the solution. If you never have the solution, keep your mouth shut. I have the solution. I'm not asking you. As they would say in the court, I put it to you. I put it to you. I have the solution. And when I hear that, I think about myself, that God has placed in this position. I am, am I an Ireland? Am I an Ireland? Because as Jesus is the good shepherd, we read in 1 Peter chapter 5, Um, The book of Acts chapter 20, um, John chapter 20, 21, and there are other passages where Jesus said to Peter in John chapter 21, feed my sheep. 
When he asked Peter three times, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than money? Do you love me more than the fish? Yes, Lord, I do. He said, feed my sheep. Do you love me more than these, Peter? Yes, Lord, I do. Feed my lamb. The lamb is the young ones. They, they need a little more attention. And third time, do you love me, Peter? He said, yes, Lord, you know I do. Feed my sheep. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, admonish and command those of us who are chosen to be leaders by God, not by some Bible college or by some man. He said, make sure that you feed the sheep, shepherd the flock over which God has made you overseer. And do not do it out of compulsion, out of, you know, whatever we, we see happening today. He said, do it with the understanding that God put you in this position to be an under shepherd. And he said, don't lord over God's people. He said, do it and lead them by example. So I am not here to tell you what to do or just what to do. I'm also here to tell you, do what I do. Do what I do. As Gideon got the 300 men, and when they got to the point where they were going in the battle, Gideon said, watch me and do what I do. That's a true leader. You notice Jesus, the scripture said, when he leads out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Leaders must lead from the front. You're supposed to follow your leader. You're supposed to mimic your leader. What you see a leader do, you do it. Wherever your leader put step, you step there. If you can't do that, run for your life. So as we pray today, and you say you pray for me, what do you pray for me when you pray for me? I don't need you to pray for clothes for me. No, I don't even pray for clothes. You don't do that. After you reach a certain place in God, there are certain things you don't pray for anymore. You pray for that when you're an orphan. When you understand that you're a son, you don't pray for clothes. You don't pray for food. You don't pray for certain stuff because that's already taken care of. So when you pray for me, even reading the scripture, how should you pray for me? When you read in the scripture and Paul and Peter and others request of the church to pray for them, what is it that they ask the church to pray for them about? Hmm? One of the things that Paul would constantly ask the church to pray for him about, that he would have boldness. When the boldness show upon you, what you, you, you equate it with me being angry, rough, harsh. You know, it's boldness. This is, not, this is not natural for me. This is not natural for me. Naturally, I don't want to be in front of anybody. I do not have a problem being by myself. Truly, I don't. So for me to stand there, the sister that read the scripture yesterday, after the meeting, she came to me and she said, Pastor, I came down, you know, and doing whatever, whatever I'm doing. And so she said, she said, I don't know how you do it. Because she said, you know, I was so nervous looking at all those people. And yesterday, it was just a little bit, little handful of person inside here. So I'm, I'm, if, if she should come down here today and look up and see all these eyes looking back at her. For me to stand here and say what I say and do what I do, it's the boldness of the Holy Spirit that comes upon me and it's necessary to break you out of certain lies and certain bandage. Because when, when, when the Lord is even using me to say certain things, it's not you that I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to principalities and powers. And I'm dealing with some, some demonic spirits. Dismantling things. And you're judging me out of your mind, out of your flesh. Boldness is important. The prophets needed boldness in the Old Testament. And when you look in the scripture, they talk about even Jesus when he was being, they, they wanted to kill him. 
And they said, is, he, is this the one that they, you know, they, they're seeking to kill? But yet he speak boldly. <laughs> Even though they wanted to kill him in the face of those who hated him, he was bold. And that boldness with Jesus is not just because he was Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I pray that every one of you will get boldness. Because when you're shy and timid and, and, and Canadians, I, 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 don't, I don't like confrontation. So, you know, I, I, I try not to. And I try, when you're walking with God, even if you keep yourself locked up in a room, Satan is going to come in there and he's going to mess with you. And you need boldness to tell him to leave and tell him which door to go through and tell him never to come back to this place. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray together. We pray individually from morning, of course. But together, there is something about us praying together. So go ahead and talk to the Father. Pray for each other. Pray for those that are watching online from Africa, U.S., all over. Pray for them and pray as the Spirit would also lead you. Go ahead and talk to him. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this privilege and this opportunity that you have given unto us to come together one more time. You kept us, Father, throughout the past day. You kept us through the night. And you wake us up this morning. We're clothing our right minds. For some of us, we may be experiencing even certain ailments in our bodies. But in the midst of it, you, you, we, we are in our right minds. That's something to be thankful for. Father, thank you for allowing us, Father, to come together as your people in this room, in in in. in in, 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 in the living room, in, in, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in, in wherever, Father, you're allowing people to come together around their television, around their computer, their tablets, whatever, oh, format or medium that they, it's our platform that they choose to do so. Father, I pray that the same anointing, the same presence of the Holy Spirit that is in this room, they will also encounter the same. And Father, as we have read in your word, Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ declared that I am the good shepherd. He said, everyone who came before me, they are thieves and they are robbers. But I am the true shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. I give my life for the sheep. Jesus, we want to thank you. Thank you for laying down your life for me. Oh, when I was yet in sin, when I was yet in darkness... When I was yet lost, you came, you sought, you seek, you found me, and you brought me back to the fold. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You said there are other sheep that you have which is not of this fold. The first fold was Israel. The other sheep were the Gentiles. I was a part of that other sheep. But you said, they I must also bring. Oh, that they will be one fold and one shepherd. Thank you, Jesus, for being my shepherd. For being my shepherd. I will never be lost again. I will never go astray again. I am going in and out and finding peace pastors you are the door you are the door of the sheep you are the door of the sheep thank you thank you thank you and fathers we come together in this moment in this place in this room one more time i thank you for your precious holy spirit precious precious wonderful beautiful Holy Spirit, without him, we can't do what you require of us. Without him, we can't be what you require us to be. But thank you that you gave him. He's here right now. And Holy Spirit, how oh, I 
I, 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 I honor, I honor you being here. And I ask that you will cover this room like a blanket with your presence. And I pray that for every one of us who come together in this room and those that are coming together beyond this room, I pray, Holy Spirit, that they will encounter your presence today in the way that the Father has willed it. The way that the Father has willed it, that which the Father desired, that which the Father has purposed. Holy Spirit, you're here to, to, to accurately, purposefully work with him. You're not in competition with him. You are here to carry out his perfect will. And may we align ourselves today that that which the Father wants done today, there will be, no, there will be nothing left out. There will be nothing missed. For those of us who were here even yesterday and those who were at home watching online and they experienced the word and what we were doing, Father, may we not be stuck, but understand that yesterday is completely gone. Today? It's a new day. Morning by morning, new mercies. Holy Spirit, may we open ourselves so that you can teach us how to shift. You, you can teach us how to make the transition easily. My God. May we not stuck between floors. Whoa, Holy Spirit. That floor that we're supposed to be today, may we be there. May we be there. May we be there and experience everything that you have purpose for us to encounter. Father, thank you for those that you're adding to the church today. The church is yours. It's not ours. Man has passed their place and... And, 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 and step out of their boundaries and hijack your church. But you, you're judging them. The church belongs to you. Thank you for those that you're adding to the church today. Such as are being saved. Thank you. Some we may know, some we may not know. While we're here in the body. But Father, I thank you. That you're adding to the church today. Such as are being saved. Holy Spirit, I pray you will have freedom to minister to your people. I pray the word will have free course to minister to us. Father, thank you for your continued guidance and protection and provision as a, as a father. You are the perfect father. You are the perfect father. As Jesus said, my father is the one who has given me commands. <laughs> and, 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 he, and he was faithful to you, Father, in doing what you wanted him to do. So he glorified you perfectly in the earth. May we as the church also accurately align with your son, which we becomes the body of Christ, that we may also perfectly glorify you in the earth. Father, thank you for granting comfort to those who are in need of such peace hope joy strength courage protection provision you know what we have need of even before we ask so father i want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Thank you. Amen. Be seated if you can, please. Can we sing it one more, one time? Even one time. You know the song? Ah. <laughs> And, 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 and before you sing, hear this. Hear this. 
in verse 14 of the chapter that was read, it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. As the Father, note, as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. Father, may we know you as Jesus did. You know us already. You know us already. Where the, where, 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 where the, where the conflict lies, Father, it's us not knowing you. But may we know you as Jesus did. Go ahead, sis. Father in heaven, how we love you. We, we lift, lift your, your name, name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your sons declare your mighty words. Father, 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 in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. What a name, what a name. May your kingdom be established. In, in our, our praises, praises as, as your, your sons, sons declare. declare your mighty words. One Father more time. in heaven, Father in heaven, oh, Father, 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 in Father. Heaven, how we love you. We, we lift, lift your, your name, name in all. The earth. the earth. Can you see his name being lifted up? May, May your, your kingdom, kingdom be established, established in our praises. praises. Hallelujah. As, As your, your sons, sons declare, declare your mighty work. One more time, one more time. Father, father in heaven, my father, how we love you. Our father, we lift your name in all the earth. Wow. May, May your kingdom, kingdom be established in our praises. As your sons declare your mighty works. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to was come. Who and is and is to come. Blessed, Blessed be, be the name. The Lord God. Your Almighty. Almighty, you reign forevermore. Blessed be the Lord. Thank you, Father. God Thank you, Father. Almighty. Father, may we know you. May we know you. May we Who know you. There's a need for us to, to know come. you. Blessed be the Lord. May we know you as you He's know God us. Almighty, you reign forevermore. Yes, you reign forevermore. Thank you. There's so many things that we have been lied to about when it comes to faith in God. We don't believe that certain things are possible. And one of the things that 
many of us do not understand and believe is that we can know God as he knows us. You know, you know, you know where that is 100% possible? Through the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we may know the things that are freely given unto us. God has given himself unto us as father. And if a child doesn't know its father, it leaves the child in a compromise position where they, where they, str they struggle with identity, they struggle with security, and so many other things. Do you know that there's a lot of children living in a home? Because even some of you, when I talk about father and I will say, how many of you grew up with a father? You know, unlike me, I know the majority of us did not grow up with our father. But some of us say, oh, you know, I, I grew up with my father. He was in the house. He was there, you know, and stuff like that. But did you really know him? Did you know your father? God wants you and I to know him. Jesus says, I know him and he knows me. He knows me. In Exodus chapter 32, children of Israel commit a grave sin against God. They made a golden calf and worship it. The idea came from Egypt. And God said to Moses in chapter 33, I am going to send an angel with you. Before God said, I will go with you. I will go before you. I will be with you. And because of the sin that they committed, God said, I'm going to send an angel with you. Moses said, if you don't go with me, I ain't moving from here. And he says, you, God says, you know me. You, God says, you know my name. Name means, not Moses, nature. You know who I am by very nature. Moses said, I want to know you as you know me. And that's why he says, show me your glory. That I may know you. And God said, no man can see my face and live. Moses said, I don't care. You, you, I want you to show me who you are. However you, you're going to do it. And God, Moses was so determined. God said, okay, there is a place by me. Because Moses could not see God in his purest form in the body. God said, there is a place by me. I am going to, I am going to put you in the cliff of the rock. And I'm going to cover you with my hand. Hand symbolizes power. And then he says, I'm going to pass by you and I'm going to allow you to see my back part. What does God's back part look like? Moses only saw his back part and his skin shine brighter than the light. And in chapter 34, God showed him who he was. That's why later on when God said, move out of my way. Let me wipe out the nation of Israel and I'll raise up a new nation. Moses said, no, 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 no. Remember who you are. You're a merciful God. You're a forgiving God. You're a God of compassion because God revealed himself to him. So now he could remind God who he is and God back up and God said, okay, for your sake, I'm going to save them. You can know God. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You can know God. If I didn't know him, I wouldn't be standing here like this today. I wouldn't be the person that I am today. You can know him. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, even if you don't want to, I'm still going to tell you, you can know God. Yeah. Yes, you can. We're moving on. Um, we have persons visiting with us today, so let me recognize them. And um, as, I, as I, I've been saying from time to time, that when you're inviting someone, please, for God's sake, prepare them. <laughs> 
This is not church as usual. <laughs> so if you don't prepare them, it can damage them. <laughs> it can damage them. <laughs> Because they're going to leave offended. They're going to leave, you know, thinking all kinds of stuff. But if you prepare them and they receive what you say and come, they say, oh, wow, it's exactly what you told me. And they're going to even see more than what you told them because you can't tell them everything. And so you're coming here. We're using this. This is not our... Um, permanent spot as you know this is Sheridan College this is Hazel McCallan lecture all so we are simply I was gonna say borrow but we're not borrow we we, we, pay, we paying we, we we paying we we're temporary yeah we're just using it tenants until we get that place that I painted yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right? That place of free parking. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That place, you can stay there as long as you want. Amen? And we're, get, we're gonna get there. But until then, we do with what we have until we get what we ought. So I'm going to ask those of you that are visiting with us today for the very first time, wherever you are, just stand for a minute or so. Coming down, coming down, at the top, coming down, coming across. Okay, so let me start at the top. Your first name, please. Digo. Ni, Nico, Nico, Jaden, Katerina, Dominic, Alice. You're not Alice in Wonderland, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am going to ask someone, not the person who invited you, but someone who invited you. Your dad. Not your dad. Not your dad this time. And who invited you, Nico? Girlfriend and mom? Oh, Jasmine. Okay, and I know who Jasmine mom is. So I don't want Jasmine to do it. Who invited you? Judy. All three? Okay, so Judy. I'm going to ask someone else from the ministry, whether two or three or four or 20 of you, give them a welcome hug. The rest of you, put your hands together for them. Welcome them. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> and after you get your hugs, you may take your seat. Thank you for coming. The next thing I want to do, as you know, um, we, we had a baptism, was it two... Two Saturdays ago? Right, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, but the time is going. Today is the 21st of January. Guess what? 2024 is finished. <laughs> it's gone. Because once January bid you goodbye, it's over. Next thing we're going to do, we, of course, we... I said I think it was uh, when we gave out the certificate for the family from the states that got baptized because they were leaving the same day to go back. I told you we would hand out the, the certificates the, the following week, but you know there was a few little things. So even today, I'm still not going to do that. Next week, we will start giving out the certificate for those of you who got baptized then. Um, so we'll do some other things in between here, and I need to get to the point of really sharing the word with you today. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to ask Sister Nardia to come here, please. Um, for those of you who are a part of the women's um, group and WhatsApp, she shared a, a portion of it there. 
and she sent it personally to me also, the men did not hear. And there are other women that did not hear. So I want you, uh, is she watching today? You shared the link, so there's a possibility that she's watching. She's going to share something with you about her mom and the healing that her mom came into. Good morning. So I, as Pastor said, um, I shared with him um, my two sisters. I don't know if you remember last week. Um, I came down and he was praying for my sister in St. Louis. And so I shared the link with them, and my sister in Jamaica shared it with my mom. And so she watched one of the teachings, and so they called me, and she was like, I want more. And I want more. It w it was that wasn't the January 6th. That was a teaching before that. It was the one for the week when you prayed for me. Oh, okay, okay. So my sister didn't tell her anything. She oh. just shared it with her. Oh, okay. And then she called and said she needed more. Mm -hmm. And so I was sharing it with her before, but she wasn't watching. She said she couldn't um, access it. Um, she goes to church, and as usual, Caribbean church, you know, we go <laughs> worship, we go home. Yeah. The same, the same way we, we, well, same mm -hmm. way they go, they come back home. So she said she needed more, and so my sister showed her how to access the teachings. So she said she was going to bed. And then the <sighs> next morning, my sister called me, which was very unusual, because she was getting ready for work, and I saw a video call, and I was like, that's strange. So when I called, she was looking not like her usual stuff. And I said, what's up? She said, it's mommy. She went to bed and she came out this morning and she's just rejoicing. She's so emotional. <laughs> so she had a pinch nerve and her hand was like this, going to church, this is praise God. And her hand couldn't go up. And when she turned the camera on her, she was just bawling and her hand was up in the air and she was just rejoicing. She said, I didn't even ask pastor to pray for me yet and I'm healed. <laughs> she said, I didn't even ask him yet and I'm healed. And she was just crying and rejoicing because the, the day before she said she was crying about the pain she was experiencing and how her hand was hurting. And you know, she, they said they couldn't do anything about the pinched nerve. And so she was just ready to go and share the word because she, she just couldn't believe. She was in so much shock. And she, she was just beyond, besides herself. And then she was watching yesterday again. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so she said, um, I enjoyed every <coughs> bit of it. So I'm hoping she's watching that yes. again. And she's walking in her healing. Wow. She said, um, and how long did she have that um, problem? I'm not even sure. I should ask her. I'm not sure. But okay. she went to the doctor several times and they said it's, my, even my sister was, when she was on the call, she said, if you're giving, mommy, if you give me anything, you normally do it like this. Mm -hmm. So she was like, they were just rejoicing. Wow. She couldn't stretch. She was the weakness. Wow. She couldn't stretch her Wow. Enough. Wow. And, and the thing is, uh, you said that when she watched the first video, she said, I want more. I heard her in the background. She's like, I want, I want more. more. I want wow. more. So she was open. She and was that's why she open. came into that. She was very open. Bless you. And also, Jody. Jody. When I came down. That's your sister in St. Yes, Louis. When you prayed. Um, she said it was the coldest day in St. Louis. And as you were praying for me, the heat that took her, wow. she was so hot. Wow. She said, I was just, <laughs> I just couldn't explain it, but I got so hot. And she's not at that age where, she's not at that okay. Age. She's younger than I she's am. She's young. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Bless you. And what's, what's your mom's name? You know Jamaica. Yeah. She's Jenny, but her name is Jacqueline. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Sister Jenny, a.k.a. Jacqueline. So grateful for what God has done in your life and what you have experienced. So the next thing I want to do before... Anyone that is here right now experiencing any kind of pain in your body or any kind of sickness or disease, 
and you're open, I'm not here to force anything on anybody. I've said that for years because I remember when the Lord told me what he would do through my life and, you know, not all the people believe it and stuff like that, but I believe what he said to me and there started to be, there started to come forth certain manifestations and I saw how people would behave and react because of various things, various things. People accuse me of um, involving, you know, in Jamaica they call it obia. It's something that Canadians would refer to it as what? Witchcraft. And witchcraft also has different facets to it, but you would refer to it as witchcraft and stuff like that. But I know it was real. And so if you're here and there is a sickness, a disease, a, a malady, a infirmity that Satan has been using for a while now to imprison your body, please, I beg of you, come in agreement with God and experience his healing touch. Who, who needs healing here? Okay. Okay. Ushers. Um, the space is limited, so you know when you go to the doctor surgery. When you go to the doctor surgery and you sign in, you're called in according to. So put those, don't put them in double rows. So keep them to the side until I pray for the others, then you allow them to come in, okay? And you're experiencing that pain right now across your face. Okay. How long ago did you have that surgery? In 93. Okay. So both knees and your back. Arthritis. Young girl like you. Anyway, we're going to deal with it. Lower back. And you're in pain right now? It's stiff. Okay. When did that happen? Oh, yeah? And it's pain you're experiencing there? Do you know what it is that is contributing to that? Scoliosis. Um, is that something to do with your spine, right? Okay. How long have you been experiencing this? On and off? Mm. Okay. Well, today, the 21st day, mark it down, the 21st day of January 2024. 2024 marks the end of that scoliosis situation. Don't just be looking at me now. I want you to understand that it's not me that is the source of your healing today. It's God. I am a vessel. I'm simply giving God the freedom to demonstrate himself through me. He has done it many times over. You heard the testimony of our sister. Her mom in Jamaica never met me. She's watching the video. And the presence, the power of God that was in the video, she opened herself up to it. You, you, hear, you heard her saying that I didn't even reach out to ask Pastor Bobby to pray for me yet. And I got my healing because God is the healer. And so right now, as you come and you open up yourself to the Spirit of God, I am joining faith with you that whatever you came down here with, 
you're going to leave it in the garbage bag, in the garbage, garbage bin, and we're going to dump it. We're going to dump it. We're going we're to command the devil to take his garbage and go back with it. Because sickness and disease is not from God. It's from the wicked one. And he wants you to see God in a, in, in a way that, you know, would tarnish. But today, God's goodness is going to manifest itself in your body. Father, I thank you for your healing virtue that is present in this room right now. I thank you for your promises that are true. And you have promised over and over and over and over in your word that you are a healer and that you, it's your perfect will for us to be healed. For us to be healed. It is your will. And so, Father, today, I am not giving your people gimmickry. I am not trying to show off myself. I want to show you off. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, upon the authority of your word, you said when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So, Father, we're not accepting anything less, anything different. So right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I lay my hands on you, I take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I take authority over the spirit of bondage and I command the spirit of infirmity to loose your body and let your body go. And as Jesus said to the woman in Luke chapter 13, woman, you are loose from your infirmity. I am saying that to you today. I pray God you will be able to hear it and receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your healing presence, your healing power that is flowing in this room right now. I rebuke this virus. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I command the pain to leave your leg right now, my sister, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, from the crown of your head and to the soles of your feet. The Lord Jesus Christ heals you. Father, thank you. This pain that you're experiencing across your face right now, Father, you said, when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So I am obeying your word. Show off yourself. Be healed. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I lay my hands on my brother, your son, I speak to his eye. I command the spirit of blindness that work behind every eye sickness and disease. I shut down its operation. And Father, I speak the word of Christ to his eye right now. I command your eye to function to the normalcy that God created to function without any impediment, without any endurances. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to take your hands off his I let his eye go in the name of Jesus. Be healed, my brother, from the crown of your head until the soles of your feet. My brother, I release the healing virtue of Christ to flow into your back. I release the healing virtue of Christ to flow into your knees. Oh, Father, you know that he had an operation how many years ago on his back and his knees. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for restoring his back. I thank you, Lord, for restoring his knees in the name of Jesus the Christ. Father, even what the operation, what the operation failed to do. Father, many times when people have operation, it even caused other things to happen. It leave other complications. But, Father, when you do it, it, it is perfectly done. So right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release the healing virtue of God to flow into your body. Father, I take authority over the spirit of arthritis. I take authority over the spirit of arthritis. I rebuke it. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak the healing power, the healing virtue, my sister. Oh, spirit of the living God, flow through her body. Spirit of infirmity, 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 spirit of infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, take your hands off our body. Take your hands off our body right now. Satan, we're not here to negotiate with you. You must go. So from the crown of your head and to the soles of your feet, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. You have demonstrated yourself time and time again. She has seen it. She knows that you can. She knows that you will. I speak to her hand, and I command it to be healed. 
I speak to your back. I speak to your body in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Father, this scoliosis, as I rest my hands on the back of your neck, I release the power of God to flow down into your spine. I release the power of God to flow down into your spine. I release the power of God to flow down into your spine. And in the name of Jesus, every vertebrae, every disc, I command your spine to respond to the power of the living God right now. I command in the name of Jesus, wherever nerve endings are being affected by disc resting on it, vertebrae, I command order. In the name of Jesus, be restored to the normal operation. Father, thank you for your power that is now flowing into our body, bringing order to our spine. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. What is happening? Yeah? What was the surgery for? Okay. And the, that, um, the first one you told me, what, what is that? What does that? Okay. Okay, okay. So do you experience pain uh, as a result of that? Okay. And how long has that been? Here in a month? Huh? Okay. Oh, okay. Today, I am believing God with you. That you're walking out of this room, not with that sickness or that disease in your body. Believers, I want you not just to sit there and watch. Be in agreement with me. What is happening? Your knee? What is happening? Autoimmune skin disease. There's something that is the same thing that she has up here. So today, come in agreement with me, church. Father, thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your healing virtue. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your healing virtue. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Remind me of your name again. Katerina. Father, as I rest my hands upon Katerina, Father, you said in your word in Mark chapter 16, when, you, when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So, Father, as I lay my hands on her, I take authority over the spirit of infirmity that has come and arrest her body for over a year now and has been causing this thing to imprison her body. She's not capable of functioning even the way that she ought. But, Satan, I command you to take your hands off Katarina's body. Take your hands off her body, Father. Take, oh, Father, take control of her body right now and eject the spirit of infirmity from her body. And that wound that she has as a result of an operation that will not be healed, Father, I release the healing virtue of God to flow right now into her body and bring complete healing. In the name of Jesus, I speak order to your immune system and I release the power of God to flood your being right now from the crown of your head and to the soul of your feet. Father, thank you for your healing virtue that is flowing through her body and making her completely hold. You are the living God. You are the eternal God. There is nothing impossible or too hard for you. Father, thank you for glorifying your name. Thank you for touching her and making her well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. For your healing power. I rebuke this pain in your knee. I command it to go. Jean, be healed. 
Ну тут ты выкуряешь, вот этот ковид. Autoimmune skin disease. Skin disease. You realize something is coming out, right? <laughs> oh, Father. As I rest my hand upon Shante, Father, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. And I command the spirit to let your body go. I command your body to hear the word of the Lord. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and delivered them. And Father, you promised through your son that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So that is what we are receiving. That is what we are believing. So right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, from the crown of your head and to the soles of your feet, my sister, the Lord Jesus Christ makes you hold. When the Lord is healing people, sometimes it's messy. And that's why a lot of preachers don't want to deal with it. Sometimes they puke up because whatever, whatever the, the spirit is connected to and represent, God is setting them free. <laughs> Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you. For who you are. There is nothing impossible or too hard for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, as I lay my hands on you, I command the healing virtue of God to flow through your body and to set you free from the spirit of infirmity. I command your body to be free from the spirit of infirmity and for you to be for, to for you to be made whole from this day forward i decree and declare that this affliction shall not return a second time father thank you for your healing virtue thank you for your healing virtue thank you for your healing virtue flowing through her body and setting her free You foul spirit, you spirit of bondage, spirit of oppression, spirit of bondage, spirit of oppression, spirit of bondage, spirit of oppression, let our body go. I speak the order of Christ to your body. I speak the order of Christ to your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out! Come out! Every residue, every residue, come out in the name of Jesus. For so long the spirit of infirmity has been holding your body captive. The woman in the scripture in Luke chapter 13, for 18 years, a spirit of infirmity held her body captive. Today, I command you, woman, to be loose! Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill up every vacant area as you cleanse her of this defilement, of this foul spirit. And I decree and declare that this affliction shall not return a second time. This affliction shall not return a second time. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. 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 Somebody's been made free. Somebody's been made whole. 
In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Christ. Father, thank you. 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 Every residue of the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of bondage, the spirit of oppression, the spirit of oppression, I command it to let your body go. And Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your authority. Thank you for your power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak the order of Christ to your body, my sister. I take authority over the spirit of infirmity one more time. I take authority over the spirit of bondage. I take authority over the spirit of oppression. I speak to your pancreas one more time. And I command the order of Christ to flood your body right now. I command your pancreas to come alive again. Produce the insulin that your body need in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And Father, I thank you for setting her free. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, the one whom you sent, he came, he died, he rose again, he's ascended, and he's seated at your right hand, and he has given us authority to go. He said, in my name, you will cast out demons. In my name, you will heal the sick. Father, thank you. Thank you for granting it in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I thank you for your power and your presence that is in this room right now. And that everything, Father, everything that Satan has done and is doing, you are greater. You are above. And so, Father, right now, we say to the devil, your days are numbered. And right now, Father, I release a cease and desist order. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. What is happening here? What is, what is contributing to that? I'm coming back to you. So you haven't taken him to the doctor? What they say, sleep apnea. And you say every night, at some point, he stops breathing. And they're saying to take out the tonsil. Is that the solution? That's the only solution they're giving you. That's the only solution they're giving you? Hold mommy hand. <laughs> What is your name? Chris. Chris. Christopher. Pastor is going to pray for you. Okay? Father, Father, I take authority right now in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ over Christopher's body. This sleep apnea that has come to imprison this child's body. You wicked spirit. I shut you down. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of bondage, spirit of oppression. Take your hands off Christopher's body right now. I'm not asking you. 
and I'm not begging you. I command you to do so right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for your authority and your power that is available to us. And you said when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So, Father, I believe your word. I believe that you're a God who cannot lie. Your word cannot return unto your void. It cannot. It must accomplish and prosper into the very thing that you have sent it. And so I send your word into his body right now, and I shut down this thing. I shut down its operation. Father, I am decreeing and declaring that they will not need to remove his stencil because, Father, right now you are taking care of this condition that medical science is limited. It's limited in its operation, but you are not limited. There is nothing impossible or too hard for you. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing power. I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit to flow into his body and to make him hold. Father, I am decreeing and declaring that this night, tonight, that this night coming, he will sleep without any impediment, without any interruption. Father, I decree and declare it from the high orders of heaven to earth. Show off yourself. Show off yourself one more time. In the name of Jesus. Father, as I hold him on my body, the anointing that is now present on me, I release it to saturate his body. I release it to saturate his body. And to make him whole. Father, thank you for touching him and healing him of this bondage, of this condition in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. We believe that it is so. We believe that it is done. Christopher, the Lord Jesus Christ makes you whole. The Lord Jesus heals you. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Receive it. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. This, 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 this is the leg. This one. Were you experiencing pain before you came down here? Whenever you tried to bend, climbing stairs and stuff, you experienced pain. Have you ever experienced healing before? Yeah. And you, 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 it was healed. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> okay, but you experienced healing before. Okay, so now I'm saying that if you had experienced it before, it's the same God. The same power. Yeah. So therefore, receive your knee and your back being free. Being free. Being free. When you did that before, you, you would experience pain? A lot of pain? Okay. Amen. Receive it. Amen. Amen. Bless you. We have two requests online. Uh, Charmaine Reed. I don't know which country they're sending this from. I'm asking for prayer for healing of her body. And our pedge, which we know, 
from California asking for healing high blood pressure and brand new lungs, also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that there is no distance in your power. I was reminding someone, Father, of how when that woman came to you concerning her daughter, that Syrophoenician woman who journeyed from Syria to come into the land of Israel concerning her daughter that was grievously tormented. And when you spoke the word, before the mother got back home, the daughter was healed. The man in John chapter 4, when he came to you concerning his son, before he got back home, his son was healed. The servants came to meet him and told him that the son was healed. He said, what time did it happen? They said, yesterday about the seventh hour. And he knew that it was the very moment when he spoke the word. So, Father, right now I speak the word to California. And I speak to Arpeg's body. I believe, Father, she's watching right now. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. High blood pressure. I command your blood pressure to be regulated, Arpeg. And I command it to be stable and never move again. I command this affliction to leave your body right now and never to return according to Micah 1 verse 9. Father, thank you for restoring her body. I thank you, Lord. We continue to believe you, Father, for brand new lungs manifesting in her body today. And Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'll experience the gift, the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus as you desire it. Father, thank you for doing it. And Father, I pray for Charmaine experiencing need healing in her body, whatever the healing is, she has stated. Father, I thank you that you are the healer. And Father, for others who have sent in requests, a person from England concerning her son. Father, mental situation. I thank you, Lord, that you are the living God. And Father, we see that medical science is bankrupt in a lot of ways. Therefore, Father, we cannot completely rely on it. So, Father, right now, I send the word to England concerning that young, that man in the name of Jesus. I send the word to the United States. I send the word to Jamaica, that mother that's reached out concerning her daughter in the name of Jesus with the fibroid condition and whatever else the doctors have said, the complication that she's experiencing in her body. I send the healing word of God to you right now. And in the name of Jesus, I say to you, be healed be healed the Lord Jesus heals you the Lord Jesus heals you. not Bobby Summers the Lord Jesus heals you father thank you for granting it we receive it we believe it and we declare that it is done it is done I want to take a few more minutes of your time, if you will allow me to. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit yesterday. <laughs> wow. Wow. And there were two sisters right here that I heard, I heard something that I know for some persons, when they're experiencing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's kind of a bit of a timidity sometimes comes in and then just block the total flow of what should have taken place because a person would say, I hear this language coming out <laughs> and, and it sounds stupid to me. So what do you do? You stop it. Excuse me. It's the Holy Spirit doing it, so it's not supposed to make any sense to you. 
All you simply do is to open up yourself and let it flow. Let it flow. And I was saying to a brother last week or the week before, because we're now in a new week, that you receive the Holy Spirit by faith, not by feelings, by faith. And you have to believe that even as you're speaking, whatever language he's giving you in that moment, because it's important for you to experience that, because it, 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 it gives you evidence that you have experienced this. And others that are around you will also know that you have come into that experience. It's, it, I am not ashamed of it. A lot of, a lot of us who say we're of God today, we're ashamed of God, and we're ashamed of the things that God has given to us. And I've seen it and I know there are places that they will not pray for the sick because they're going to puke upon their million dollar carpet. But what is the price of freedom when the spirit, when a spirit imprisons your body? Because I, 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 I remember you, you sent a message a couple of weeks ago and said that you've been experiencing this. So it has been going on for weeks now. But today, today, you're going back without it. Amen. Yesterday, before we started, uh, well, it's a part of it's a part of us starting, of course. I asked you to step out of your seat and form a circle. And in the moment of that, I was seeing certain things, so I declared it. Um, uh, Denise sent me a, a, a message a voice note, and she said she came in from work. She worked in the nights. I think she works at the post office in the States. So she came in the morning, and she said, I wasn't thinking about the time, so I went, she said, I went straight to the television, turn it on to watch the live stream. But then when I look at the time, I realized it was 8 o'clock, so we started at 9. And she said, I know eventually some point I would fall asleep, but I said, at least I would have it playing while I'm sleeping. So she eventually didn't get to connect based on what I'm, I'm hearing in the message to the live stream, but after that she go on, she watched it. And she said, I, I watched as you told the people to did you know what the spirit was saying. And as the camera was panning, I, I noticed some of them. And, and listen, even you that are working with me at the altar and doing whatever, always be in receive mode. Damien, always be in receive mode. Right? This is not about spectating. It's about us participating because every single one, including me, the Holy Spirit has something in this room for today. And she said, as I watch, I notice something and she said i at the beginning as i watched what was happening she said i got caught up in it also and the holy spirit spoke to her and stopped her she said listen and she said the holy spirit began to say the reason why we are not receiving even in a given moment the fullness of what the spirit is pouring out because we are looking to see what's going to happen rather than letting it happen with me I am looking to see what happened to her. I, I call down people. You, you there looking. Well, I wonder what's going to happen to them now. Pastor calling them. Put yourself in a position to let it happen with you. It's not about spectator being a spectator. And I said, exactly so. Keisha, Keisha came to me after the meeting and she said, Pastor, I, she spoke to Janet about it and Janet told her to come and talk to me. She said, I felt in my spirit, what I'm hearing in the spirit, that what should have been done in that moment was not completed. Why? Because we're distracted. And we have been doing it for years in church. 
people in scripture didn't do these things. They show up with an expectation, anticipation. Ushers, even though you're usher, and even yesterday, while I tell people, some of you as the usher, you're there looking in us to see if any. That's not the time. No catch nobody. Make the, if the Holy Spirit have put them down, make him catch them. It's a moment for you to receive. God doesn't need your help. When I started out in Jamaica, and of course I didn't take it upon myself. When I, so when I say I started out, God started using me. I was going places, they, I didn't have any usher. Up until now, you, I don't have no armor bearer. I didn't have no usher working with me. I didn't have nobody. I alone would drive, go to St. Thomas, miles away. I go to Kingston. And so I have nobody at the altar working with me. And when the spirit was moving and people falling out, and nobody was hurt, nobody was hurt. So even as you usher, be so sensitive to the spirit that if there's a moment the spirit wants you to receive something, not just get a caught up with people and want to catch everybody. You can't catch everybody. Make sure you catch what the Holy Spirit is downloading to you. To you. What is truth? John chapter 18. Take note of the time that I start teaching. And don't say the preacher preach long. Ministry have been taking place here. People have been healed, delivered, set free. And I'm always giving room for the spirit to work. I will never apologize for it. Because that's where life is. That's where freedom is. In John chapter 18. Verse 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. And those of you who are familiar with the scripture, we know that he was brought before Pilate, he was on trial, and Pilate needed to have something to hand down a verdict, a sentence. You cannot sentence a person to prison or to death without evidence of the person being guilty of a crime. So Pilate have been asking, what did this man do? What is he guilty of? What is the accusation? What is the accusation that you have brought against him? Pilate, the Bible says, I think it's in Matthew where the scripture said, Pilate knew that they had delivered him over to him out of envy. So when Pilate heard what they had to say, he still did not feel satisfied with it. Because if they're delivering Jesus over to him out of envy, there is made up story. There are lies. The, the scripture even said at one point, the weakness, their testimony did not agree. And so Pilate now came to Jesus personally. He said, he said I want to hear from your mouth. What have you done? Are you a king? So Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I would not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate, the governor and the judge, therefore said to him, are you a king? Are you a king? What, what's the next word? I want you to say it. Are you a king? Yes. Then. Because if you say my kingdom, 
is not of this world. If you have a kingdom, then you are a? What did God give us? When we come to faith in Christ, what did God give us? See, we, we, we've, we have been taught a certain way that when I ask a question like that, your mind is all over the place. Power and authority, but in what context? In Luke chapter 12, verse 31, 32, it is the Father's good pleasure to do what? To give you the? If you're given a kingdom, what does that make you? Do you believe that? Yesterday, I said in the fasting meeting that when you look at the present state of the church today, the church today, so why a lot of people can't handle me? And I believe that, hmm. Why a lot of people in the church cannot handle me? They have, no, they have no appetite for me. And that's why they accuse me and say all the things that they say. But I don't care. Even one or five. The way in which the church is structured. People come. A preacher preach a nice salvation gospel message, they claim. And it has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. At the end of that message, they're making an, what they call an altar call. You come down to the altar because for whatever reason, they say certain things to convict you. In many of those meetings, it's not the Holy Spirit that convicts the people. It's the preacher. The preacher start talk about, you know, oh, I remember, you know, I was so-and-so. And there was a young man who, you know, da, 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 and he went into a whatever and, and he was killed. And they started to talk about certain things that create fear and not conviction. Because when the Holy Spirit convict you, you don't need to put fear on anybody. You notice we don't make altar calls here. We baptized 38 people J J July of last year. January, two weeks ago, we baptized 20 what? 28 people. Did we make any altar call? From the time that you have been here, have you seen me make any altar call? And these people, the Holy Spirit genuinely... Deal with dealing with them. And that's how it's supposed to be. But when we look at the present church, they make altar call, they come and they say, who, who, who's, who's in this room today? You, that you know that if Jesus should come back right now, Jesus should come today, you are not ready to go with him. Come. So guess what? All of you, all of you are going to get up and come. Because you don't believe that you are ready. When, do we, when, are, when are we going to be ready? And so you come down and they say, pray this prayer with me. It's called the sinner's prayer. Garbage. No such thing exists in scripture. That's why a lot of you, you were shaky until you met me. Your foundation was shaky. They said, we're going to pray the sinner's prayer. And they put words in your mouth. Philip didn't put any word in the eunuch mouth. Jesus didn't put any words in the woman's mouth. She went and said, come, see a man. Is not this the Christ? Jesus didn't say, go and tell the people in the city that you have met the Christ. He didn't. Out of the conviction and the encounter that she had, she went. And that's what, that's what your testimony should be and look like. It's not supposed to be made up. What have you experienced in God? That's what to talk about. Whether people want to hear it or not. That's your testimony. Then after you join a church. Yes, that's it. After you join somebody's church, they sign you up for a program. Nothing beyond that. The people today in what we call the church, they have no understanding of God's divine purpose. And their knowledge of the scriptures... And guess what? They have no desire to go any further than that because they don't believe that it's important. Because the preachers are not, the preachers are not representing that. So a lot of you, a lot of you, when I, if you come here and you don't like, you go somewhere because that's not really necessary. But what I showed you yesterday on the board, 
that when a person is born again, if you look, you still see the invisible writing. When a person is born again, that place you in the family of God. But there is another word, and that is the word adoption. Adoption takes place after you're born again. You're both born again and adopted. But when do you experience the power of the adoption? And notice, notice now as I'm telling you, the shallowness of the, of the church today. When I use the word adoption, you know what is the first thing you're thinking? A little orphan baby. A baby from Africa. The, the concept of adoption in the scripture never had anything to do with a baby. It's adults that was adopted in scriptures. Even in Canada, the United States, Jamaica and other places, you can adopt an adult. Yeah, you can. Based on certain conditions, you can. But that's not the norm. But in the scripture, a person would adopt an adult male as a son to carry on their legacy. So that's the concept now Jesus is giving us through the apostles for us to understand that when you're adopted, it means that you're now a fully mature son, that you have now come to the place that you can also father others. I'm searching for men in this ministry for years now. There's a burden that I'm carrying, and I'm not afraid of it. But I want men to understand that God didn't just put your face down around me and look all pretty. And, not, and don't think that in order for God to use you, you need to be preaching. You need to make sure that you're getting equipped. That when the time comes, God can release you as a father. And I can trust that if a brother or a sister come to Marlon, that Marlon is going to represent truth. Jethro observed after Moses bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. And he noticed that Moses would sit from morning till evening judging the people. And he said, come here, come here, son. Because Moses was his son-in-law, right? He said, come here, I need to talk to you. Jethro was not a part of Israel. Jethro was of a nation among the Canaanites. Read the scripture carefully. And he was the priest. Moses marry his daughter, right? And he says, I want to give you some advice. You know, I'm not forcing, but I want to give you some advice. He says, what I see you doing, if you continue that, you're going to wear yourself out and the people. Choose men. And it gives the criteria of the men. For years, a lot of people talk about it's a one-man show. But where are the men? Men of integrity. No men will just look like men. Men that can be trusted. A son, God account upon you. Do not, do not, do not be a part of the mess and the statistics of the church where they think that a young man cannot live for God. A son, God account upon you. You can do it because you have a leader that you see a standard. And if your father is doing it, then I can do it. Men of integrity, men that are honest, men that will refuse, bribe. That you don't bribe them if you take, what? And he says, set them over 50, over 100, and watch this. And he said, the greater matter, let them bring it to you. So when you're talking, think before you talk. Think before you talk. Jesus, in answering Pilate, Pilate got the understanding that he was a king. God did not make us king after Christ came. Us being king after Christ's coming is restoration. Let me say that again. Us becoming king after Christ's coming is restoration. 
from the very beginning, listen to me, please, listen, listen to me. From the very beginning, when God made Adam, God said this, let them have dominion. Look at the word kingdom. Look at the word kingdom. King. And notice look, th th this. It's the short. For what? King. Dominion. King. The person. Dominion. The sphere. That you rule over. So from the very beginning, God said, let them have dominion. Because God, who is saying that, as God, Father, he's king. And the dominion rule that he's now giving Adam, it is meant to represent his kingship. Let them have dominion. And he give a list of what they're supposed to have dominion over. What the dominion look like. Everything on the earth, they're supposed to have dominion. The birds of the year, the fish of the sea, every creeping thing, they're supposed to have dominion over. When man sinned, the dominion was contaminated. He's still a king, but his dominion is contaminated. Because if you look at, look, look. Man is, still, man is still dominating and doing things. But it's not in representation of God. So they take the credit. They take the credit for themselves. Look what I... When, if, we, if we're in righteousness, when you do what you do, you give the glory to the Father. Because you know that he created you for his purpose to show him off. So when Christ came, he came as a king. He came as a king. He came as a king. And Pilate says, when he asks him the question, he says, if my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight for me. So Pilate said, you are a king then. If God give us a kingdom, and you know why many of us are not ruling yet? We have not received the kingdom of God. And you notice what we're commanded to seek first? So you're not paupers seeking the kingdom of God. You are kings rediscovering your heritage. You are kings rediscovering your history. You are kings rediscovering your lineage. You are kings recovering, rediscovering your identity. And that's why the scripture says, we now reign in life through Christ. We reign over sickness, we reign over disease, Reign over everything that Satan is capable of bringing against you. And as you do that, that reign become a testimony to the world. Sister Denise says, at our workplace, even um, Friday night, she said there was something, she, she, she had an experience with the Lord, a revelation, an encounter while she's at work. And she said she just started to rejoice and she praising, doing her work, you know. She rejoicing and praising. And one of the top person came over to her and said, you are always so happy. You don't have any stress in your life? That's what the world should be asking us. And then you have a platform to tell them why you are so happy. Hallelujah. Because when you're in Christ, you reign over stress. It's not that stress is not in my life. <laughs> but I am a king and kings reigns. It doesn't matter what shows up around the king. The king is always above it. Every stress that Satan shows at me, 
to try to trap me in some way, I rise above it. And you would never know that the I and I have any stress because the I and I doesn't wear it. An I and I face, I don't wear it on my shoulders. So you would think that, oh boy, everything is copacetic, right? Everything is just good. I am good, but not everything around me is good. And some of you even don't believe that you're good. Once you're in the kingdom of God, you are no longer associated with what is evil. Some of you still ask God to take evil out of you. Some of you still ask God to cleanse you. You're using Old Testament scripture. How can you be in Christ and not be good? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not making it up. That's what's in the book. Last week... In Jamaica, the public prosecutor gave the police permission to arrest a former Minister of Parliament killing his wife. In November, when they were called to the home, they thought she died of natural causes. An autopsy was done. Mr. believed that they were going to have the funeral without an autopsy. But an autopsy was done, and they found bullet residue in her body. An investigation was now open, and they found out that the man killed his wife. A fireman in Jamaica killed his mom. And we hear people, oh, the person is good, the person is good. Nobody that is not in the kingdom of God cannot be trusted to be a good person. Only when you are in Christ, there is a guarantee. There's a guarantee I will never murder anybody. There's a guarantee I will never rape anybody. There's a guarantee I'll never defraud anybody. There's a guarantee I will never do any evil. Look at your face. Do you know what it is when you're in Christ and Christ is in you and you're wrapped up? Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my hand. And he said, my father and I, we are one. And when you're in the father, no one can pluck you out. We need to believe the word, people. Because the world, there's a dying world that needs hope. People who they think is good. They say, oh, our community has been such a peaceful community for 20 odd years. I've been living here. You know, the news people always find one neighbor. And they say, oh, I've been living in this community for 25 years. And nothing like this has ever happened. And I see that man every day, and I, and I see him as a good person. You know, he say hi to me, and I say hi to him. Oh, the devil can live right next door to you. The devil can be your neighbor. And for years, he pretend. You cannot trust anybody to be good until you know that they know the good one. You know what makes you good? The love of God in you. Every goodness that comes out of God, it came out of him because of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. So when the love of God now comes, and, and Romans chapter 5 says, he pours out his love in us. So his love is in us through his spirit. So I will never do any harm to my neighbor. Because the scripture says in Romans chapter 13, love works no hill to its neighbor. Thank you, Father. I will never be numbered with a murderer. Not the spiritual one, nor the physical one. 
Because there's a lot of spiritual murderers in this room right now. They have never committed a natural murder. So we say, oh, they're good. But they hate you. And the Bible says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And the, oh my God, eternal life does not abide in you. So murderers, right now a murderer might be sitting beside you. Refusing to forgive. When the love of God possess you, you don't sleep with unforgiveness in your, in your heart. It bothers you. It's, it makes you sick until you deal with it. Because the Spirit is not going to give you any peace until you represent what looks like God. Whoever does not love his brother is a murderer and no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. God is love. And how can you say you love God whom you have never seen? But your brother that you are seeing every day, every time you hate them. We even hug with it. We come and greet each other with hate in our heart. The love of God makes you a good person. The love of God makes you a good person. The love of God makes you a good person. The love of God makes you a good person. Because only good can come from love. I'm not talking about sensational love. I'm not talking about emotional love. I'm not talking about demonic love. I'm talking about the love of God. The love that God is. The love that is God. That love reads 1 Corinthians 13. It gives you a list, a list of what love is. What love is not. And what love look like in operation. It says love is kind. Love is kind. Love does not keep a record of the wrong that is done to it. So love quickly forgive and love tear up the black book Amen. and throw it away and when something fresh up love doesn't go back and say oh I remember when you did this a year ago, two years ago love forgive and forget love forgive and forget so whatever happened now that is what love deal with right here so now love is kind Love is kind. Love does not envy. So when you go around envying people, you're of the devil because envy is a dangerous thing. <laughs> envy set you up for murder. The first murderer in human history because the first spiritual murder is Satan. Jesus said he is a murderer from the beginning. But the first murderer in you in, man, in mankind history was who? And why did he kill his brother? Because of envy. His brother's work was righteous. And he saw that God accepted his brother. And he killed his brother. And God warned him. He didn't have to do it. God said, why were your sacrifice did not accept it? God said, sin lies that you do. And God said, you must have dominion over it. Rule over it, Cain. Don't let it rule over you. But he rejected what God said to him and envied his brother. And anytime you envy somebody, some of us don't kill them physically, but you have already killed them in your mind. You have already murdered them because you hate them for what they have. You believe that what they have, I should be the one to get it. I should have been the one that God approved. I'm going to murder you, Abel. He murdered his brother and buried him in the dirt and thought that it was over because there's not a lot of people on the earth. At that time, so he thought that he would have gotten away with the perfect crime, murder. The next day, he came before God. And God says, Cain, where is your brother? Remember what was his question? Am I my brother's keeper? And God says, your brother's blood right now, it's speaking. Blood speaks. He said, your brother's blood is speaking to me right now. It's crying out from the earth. Yeah. 
Why would we walk around constantly envying, hating, malicing, doing all this stuff with all that garbage inside of you? And then some of you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Love is kind. Love does not envy. It doesn't keep a record of the wrong that was done to it. It doesn't keep a record. Notice, you know, God is no idiot. God knows so without him. We keep record. We, not just a record, records. What she did, he did, how he did it, when he did it. And some of us, when things happen... Instead of dealing with it from the love of God, we want to know, why did you say it? How did you say it? When? And we are dig, and we are dig, and we are dig, and we are dig. We are dig. Suppose God interrogate you. Come here. Come here. Come here. I am God. I want you to tell me, why did you do what you did? Why did you take off your clothes? Why did you do that? Why did you go there? Why? God doesn't ask you that. He says, if you are willing to come and confess your sin, he said, I am faithful and just to forgive you and to... So the sin, the sin that you commit are sins. He says, and to cleanse you. And you know what God used and cleanse your sin? He used the blood of Jesus. And he erased it. So there is no record. There is no record. There is no record of your sin. Because when you confess it, God erase it. And what is erased cannot be recovered. Some of you ever wondered the reason why I deal with you the way I, do, I deal with you? You've done a lot of stuff. A lot of things that I know about. Because you even tell me about some of them. And I, I never... You can bear me witness in this room today if you're willing to come out and say, I am one of them. I have never treated you any less. Because when you walk in the love of God, you don't see a person through their mistakes. You don't label a person by their mistakes. You see them as God sees them. And God doesn't see you in your mistake. God sees you in your destiny. So don't determine my future destination based on my present And some of us, we cannot let go the person of, of the mistake that they make. Every time we see them, every time we think about them, oh, he did this, he behaved like this. But that's not how love behaves. Love of God cleanses. Sin was here once, but now the scriptures say you are washed, you're cleansed, you're purified, and it's as if you never sinned. That's what God did through Christ. I am free. I was outside this morning cleaning snow. I'm from Jamaica, you know? Outside cleaning snow. I said, I'm from Jamaica. Sunshine, coconut tree, palm tree, <laughs> fresh water, Caribbean sea, cool breeze, pina colada, virgin, of course. <laughs> I'm cleaning snow. And while I'm there cleaning the snow, and then I went over to my neighbor, and I clean, and then I went over to the other neighbor, and I clean, and as I'm cleaning, I heard this song that I haven't heard in a long time, Trisha. I didn't even remember that the song exists. But all of a sudden, the song just come up in me. So I went inside, sing it, and I said to my wife, you remember this song? She said, yes. And I heard the song, the Lion of Judah shall break every chain. The Lion of Judah 
shall break every chain. The Lion of Judah shall break every chain and give us the victory again and again. Anybody know the Lion of Judah? His name is Jesus. Ah, from, from Genesis chapter 49, he was spoken about that out of Judah, the, the Lord giver is going to come forth. Ah, my God, and he's like a lion. And the Bible tells us in Revelation that when John saw him, John said, I saw... <laughs> one standing and when the elder said to him that the lion of Judah has prevailed and he is worthy to open the seal and to loose the, to, 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 to loose the seals and to open the book the lion of Judah is the one who died on the cross for us he break every chain and continue, he continues to give us the victory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, Thanks be unto God who has given us the victory, who, who has caused us to a triumph constantly in Christ Jesus. It's hard for religious people to hear me and receive what I'm teaching. And I'm not giving a gimmickry and I'm not making up what I'm making up. It's in the book. And look at how some of you are looking at me. There's a culture that we have given ourselves to, and God has raised me up to deliver you from the culture. It's a culture of lies. When you are in God, you are a good person. Outside of God, never trust me. You hear me say? Outside of God, never trust me. When Paul said to the church, follow me. What was the standard that he, say, he gave them? Follow me as I do my thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. It's winter. I'm sweating like a cow. <laughs> and some of you, you know, you want some of the heat that I carry? <laughs> wow. Then Pilate answered, responded, and said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause, I was born. For this cause, I was born. Can you say that? For this cause, I was born. Say it again. For this cause, I was born. Some of us comes out of certain circumstances in life that... We have a lot of regrets. And sometimes we get to the point where we even regret the day that we were born. That's why suicide is so high in Canada, whether it's among the ab Aboriginal people, but it's also out, not just the Aboriginal people committing suicide. Canada established a, I, I think it's what? Um, Outline and it's it's dedicated to suicide in the United States, in Japan, in 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 the Philippines, in 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 name them in China. People commit suicide, and one of the reasons why a person would commit suicide is that they see themselves of no value. So you 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 you, you curse even the very day you were born. And he said, the best thing the devil come now, and he said, the, the best thing to do is to just end it. Let me see that bottle over there with all those. Just, just don't take, don't, don't follow the prescription. Just turn it to your head and it will be better for you. We've been lied to. Who told you that when you commit suicide, it's going to be better on the other side? If you have ever been over there, 
But when you are in Christ, it turned things around. That before Christ, you were regretting the day you were born. Now in Christ, you are, wow. When I was sharing yesterday how, when I was in Jamaica, and I was maybe a bit in maybe 13, 14 at the time, learning to ride, and I went around that corner, and as I went around, I didn't understand how I should maneuver the bicycle, and I saw the car coming toward me. I closed my eyes. I said, this is it. This is the day. I'm listening to your boop, curb, car, boop, wow, something. But I heard nothing. And after a while, I opened my eyes, and I don't know where the vehicle is and everything, and I'm safe. A sister said to me, I said, she says, Pastor, while you were sharing that, I, I mean, tears came to my eyes, and this is the reason. The person said, for that moment, I'm just thinking that if you had died then, what would my life be today? Because it's because of your life now why I am the person that I am. For this purpose, I was born. For this cause, I was born. Open your mouth again and say it. For this cause... Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to make an announcement. I was born for a purpose. Now I want you to go ahead and celebrate your birth. In God, you can do that. In God, you have value of worth. Even your family, some of you, your family don't even, your, your family wish the day that you were born that it was darkness. You have family, your biological family that hates you. They don't want everything. But in Christ, Christ gives you a family. You were born for a purpose. Whether it's small or big, you were born for a purpose. Pastor, you really believe that? Yes, I do. And I want to get it in you. Well, you don't know, you don't know where I'm coming. I don't care where you're coming from. I am saying to you right now, you were born for. You may not know it yet. You may not understand it, but I am telling you. Then pastor, 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 or whatever you want to call me. Man, why you want to call me? You're, you're telling me that I was born for a purpose and go through all the things that I've been through and what I'm going through right now. If I was born for a purpose, why am I going through this? That's the reason why. That's the reason why. Because there is a devil that wants to take you out. He wants to frustrate you. He wants to confuse you. But if you hear me today, you stand up in the midst of everything and say, I'm here for a purpose. I refuse to die until my purpose is fulfilled. I was born out of wedlock. And at the time when my mother gave birth to me, that was something that was shameful. There was a time when if a woman has a child out of wedlock, she, was, she would look down on. Not like today. Because even today, now it becomes law. Common law. You know, you, you, you're free to live in that state. And the only thing about it is that it's common. <laughs> Anybody can do it. So I was born out of wedlock. My father... Walked out on my mother when she was pregnant with me. And so she planned and thought about doing an abortion. And my eldest sister said she tried something, but it didn't work. It didn't work. Aren't you glad it didn't work? <laughs> I had 13 siblings. My mother had 14 of us. I came in the middle. 
<laughs> I came in the middle. She didn't see me of any value to her life. Because imagine you're pregnant with a child for a man that abuse you and walk out on you. How do you think about that child? Because that child is connecting to, connected to your abuser. When you even see the child, the child remind you of your abuser. Marlon, let the Holy Ghost rise up in your brother. And Marlon, no, no, resist the Holy Ghost when the Holy Spirit wants to deal with you. No, Marlon, don't do it. All right? So there's a whole lot of stuff that is tied up around me. My mother rejected me from in the womb. Not only my father rejected me. Because if you want to kill the child, if you want to do an abortion, it means that you reject the fetus. So rejection was projected to me in the womb. My father that is supposed to be my covering, walk away. My father that is supposed to be the priest, walk away. And so I am exposed to anything. No wonder I go through some of the things that I went through. But today, but today, do you think that I have any regret? Oh, my God. And if everything that I've been through was necessary to make me who I am today, do it again, God. I wasn't going to stay there. But as I read that, it's, it's, it's saying something again to somebody. Say it one more time. I was born for this cause. I was born for this cause. I said, even if you don't know it, you are set up yourself to know it right now. Once you start to say, I was born for this cause, you are set up yourself to know why you were born. I was talking to a sister last night. And Father, right now as I remember her, I pray for her mom that is in the hospital. They said that she has cancer of the blood. Her kidneys have failed. And so many things is happening. Father, her heart is also damaged by something. And Father, the, all the things that the doctors are saying. Father, I come in agreement with her that her mother will live. Her mother will glorify you. Father, the family will come to know the living God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about Ruth that testify about her back. Her mom, after she testified, like there was this attack that just came against her mother. Bam, 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 bam. And as I was talking to her, and I said to her, over the years in Jamaica, and even since I've, I've been here, I've gone to the hospital, I've gone to person's home, that doctor say, you know, they have cancer, they're in palliative care, and family members call me to come and pray with them. Anytime, every time, Sister Alicia, I go in, the first thing I ask them, do you want to live? What the answer is, you think? I've not met anybody yet that say, no, I don't want to. They say, yes. Next question, that, what's the next question you think I'm going to ask them now? Next question, do you believe that you have fulfilled the purpose for which you were born? We think the answer is no, because a lot of people don't even know about purpose, much less to discover it and fulfill it. And I said, listen to me, if those two answers is the absolute truth and you know without a shadow of a doubt that you haven't fulfilled your purpose yet, you have something to stand and to resist debt. I said, you have something to stand and to resist death. Because why would you want to die when your purpose has not yet been fulfilled? Because that's why you were born. You weren't born for clothes. You weren't born for food. You weren't born for all the material stuff that people are bragging and show off. And because if that, no, you came in this life to impact the earth for God. When I came to Canada the first time, visiting in 2001, on the 24th of the September, 2001, it was a Monday. And the Sunday morning, they brought me to the ministry, and I preached. I think if, I am, if my memory served me right, the first message that I preached was 
from 2 Kings chapter 2. And I speak about the different places that Elijah was with Elisha before he was taken up and what they symbolized. And Elijah wanted to leave him at each spot. And Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as your soul live, I will not leave you. He ended up with a double portion of what was on Elisha, Elijah. And after, in the, in the, in the, in the midst of the message, I, I shared a little of my testimony. Because I, I said, all of you here. You see this preacher, and they're used to them bringing up preachers from Jamaica, and they bring up preachers from Kingston, preachers from Mantego Bay, preachers from Ocho Rios, or preachers from Negril, the tourist spots, right? They said, I'm the first preacher that come from country. But boy, the country preacher was packed. <laughs> the country preacher had a, the, listen to me, I don't care what you want to call me, but I know that God packaged me and sent me. And anybody who will see me for who I am, your life will never be the same again. And when I shared a little bit of my testimony, remember the meeting over? This lady came up to me, you know, visiting preacher, lying long, everybody shaking you and greeting you, da-da-da. Especially if they think that you preach powerful. So this lady came up and she said, you don't have to talk about where you're coming from or the things that you've been through. Because nobody would know. I said, that's why. I need to talk about it for you to see what the Lord has done for me. Some of you are ashamed of your testimony. You're ashamed of where you're coming from. Some of you have never told anybody who you were, where you're coming from, what you used to be. You're ashamed. Why? Because again, many of us are not operating in love so if we hear where you come from, we're going to look down at you. Do I care if you want to look down? You know what they say? You hop there? Look down for me. Look, look down for me. Look down at me. You think that's going to stop me? I am above that. That's my past. That's my past. That's who I... I am proud to tell people where I am coming from because I am showing off God. Go to Jesus. An uneducated boy who never got a formal education. And I'm now standing in a college. <laughs> a reputable college. <laughs> Teaching. Teaching. Look what the Lord has done. Such neighbor said, anybody need to hear your testimony? <laughs> now turn to them and say, can you handle it? <laughs> Brother Wes, in the scripture there was a day when Jesus entered into a room. He was invited by a leper called Simon for dinner to have a meal with him. And the Bible said while they're in the room, stretch out your feet over here. The woman walked in and she came, didn't ask anybody any question. She just comes straight over to him and she took out her alabaster box. That alabaster box with the oil in there, it costs over two years wages and she break it when she said break it it means that she opened it an alabaster box mostly even that time and even today alabaster box was made in india and it's made out of a, a, a heavy kind of material you said like stone so when you close it i have one when you put the ointment and the, the spike nard it the, the aroma is strong but when you close it 
you put it as close as you can to you know, and you're hardly smelling it. It trap. So she opened it and she began to pour it upon his feet. And then she began to pour it out upon his head. And the oil of that thing just running down. And she took her hair. She took off what she had covering her hair. And she unfolded her hair and she began to wash. Note it. She used her hair. The woman's hair is her glory. And she used her glory to wash the feet of the king of glory. And somebody got jealous. Somebody started to criticize her. And said if, the, if Jesus knew what kind of a woman it is that was touching him because she's a sinner. And Jesus picked up on the thought of the host. And he said, let me ask you a question. Or let me sh sh share something with you. He said, a king had two servants. One hold him an enormous amount. The other hold him a small amount. He said he frankly forgave both of them of the debt. Jesus says, Simon, which one of them you think will love the master the most? He said, I suppose the one that was forgiven the most. He said, this woman whose sins were many, they are now forgiven. Every one of us, God took us from somewhere. And gave us a testimony. Your testimony become tools in your bag. Your testimony is not baggage. It's tools in your bag for somebody to know that guess what? It doesn't matter what you're going through. Look what the Lord has done. This is who I was. This is where I'm coming from. This is what I did. But now... I'm washed, I'm cleansed, I'm redeemed. Mm. I need to stop, I need to stop, I need to stop. But the Holy Spirit wants me to speak to someone. I may not see you again, but I want it to ring in you. I was born for a... Cause. So as I was talking to the sister last night, I said, when I asked person that, you know, who have cancer, I said, do you want to live? Yes. Is your purpose fulfilled? No. I said, well, you can't die now. Because if your purpose is not fulfilled, because that's why you were born. If you leave from the womb and head straight to the tomb, your life was in vain. So now I want you to agree with me that we're going to defeat cancer and you're going to live and fulfill your purpose. And I said, whether you are 70 or 80, and you know that your purpose is not yet discovered, all when you're shaking and whatever, you refuse to give in to death because even one day before you die, you should touch your purpose. And I'm not talking about a made up purpose. I'm not talking about a purpose that some guru give to you because there's a lot of made up purpose out there and people are doing stuff and they're not happy. You see, when you discover your purpose, even if it's hard, you're happy. Because your purpose, your purpose is it's what gives you dri the drive. It's not Red Bull. <laughs> it, you don't, when, when, when you discover your purpose, you don't need Coffee. What do I drink? Ask my wife. Last night we were there, and it was one of those evening that no big cooking. So I went in from fasting, and she said, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some saltfish fritters. I'm going to soak the saltfish already, so I'm preparing you. I said, well, you don't have to tell me, you know, because you know, say anything you give the high and I. The I and I just give thanks and say, you have any more? If I feel like, for a couple more. So we, we did some fritters, fry, ripe, plantain. No fritters, no banana fritters. No, 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 no fritters. Everywhere. And Tori was doing a project for her school that she needed to take video and pictures of so she will get her grade. So she did Kalaloo. 
fried green plantain. She used the green plantain as the bun. Then she fried egg and bacon and whatever else in the middle with the egg and the fried green plantain. It tastes good, you see? <laughs> if you were there. So when they prepare the table, and Janet says she's going to do some tea. She said to my wife, what kind of tea you want? Tori need tea. Say, pasta need any tea? My wife said, right. <laughs> I don't do tea. I don't do coffee. I don't do no stuff. I don't drink. I have never drink a Red Bull. I've seen the Red Bull somewhere. I've passed the bull even on the road. But I have never, I have, I have never drink the bull. My stamina, my energy, and I have never stood in front of you. And, you know, <laughs> no man, every time I, 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 I am firing an heat cylinder with a turbo and a super. And when both of them combine together, oof, boom, 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 boom. better come out of the road. And all of that is coming from the anointing. When you're in Christ and you discover your purpose, your purpose gives you a zeal. The Bible said when the disciples look at Jesus, they remember that the zeal of the Lord was heating him up. Not that it's a sin if you drink coffee or tea. You love your tea? And you come from Jamaica? 90 degrees sun up, you need to drink tea because you need to break the, the, the <laughs> if you're so gassy, why, why, how come you up here for gas? <laughs> come on. Jesus answered, please. Give me one more minute of your time. Jesus answered, truly, you have spoken rightly that I am a king. For this cause, I was born. Say it one more time as I move on. For this cause, I was born. Yes, you're not a mistake. You're not an accident. For this cause I was born, for this cause I have come into the world. There were things that I was going through when I was young and I didn't know why. I couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. But today, I look back and I have no regrets. Everyone, he says, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Do you remember where I stopped the last time when we were together looking at this topic? So we're looking and, and dealing with this. I am going to come back to this when I finish laying the foundation for this, the importance of truth to God. And many of you, when I said this, we're looking at the backslidden state of Israel then and the church today. Do you know that a lot of people don't know, they don't even know, much less to believe that the church has backslidden? Many people believe that the church is okay. Because, you know, we come together, we sing, we shout, we dance, play music, we celebrate and we do what we do and we're good, we're okay. But I'm going to show you why the church is in a backslidden state, and the church has to come out of that state in order for Jesus to return. If the church never come out of that state, Jesus cannot come back. I hear one person saying, true, I don't know what the rest of you are thinking. Mark my word today. If the church does not come out of this present state that it's in, you can, you can do all you want to do. Jesus cannot. If, even, if it, even if it has to delay him, that's what's going to happen. 
Many of you don't even know anything because, you know, you, you uh, praise God, you're born again, you're saved. Sometimes when I say even certain things, you say, why is Pastor saying that? I am not only talking to you in this room. Notice God has now given us a platform. I am literally speaking to the world today. In 2023, a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors even died in the pulpit last year. Pastors, various, do we have heard of bishop traveling? They travel to go and the dead, the body come back home. A lot of pastors just dropped last year. You see this year? It's going to be worse. Because God has already started to judge the church, to bring back the church in order. The church must come back in order. The church doesn't belong to the world. The church doesn't belong to a man. The church belongs to God. And it's a judgment must first begin at the house of God. And God is using me as one of the weapon, one of the tool to dispense that judgment. Whether you want to accept me or believe me or not, it doesn't matter. I am going to honor him with my life. Romans chapter 1. We started looking at the New Testament in light of the church. So we went through a few scriptures to look at Israel's backslidden condition. So now, if, you, if you're following me and understand what I'm trying to present to you. You have read the Bible. And many of us in reading the Bible, we wonder, why is it that God was so angry in Jeremiah, in Isaiah? Why God saying the thing that he said in Ezekiel? He said, Ezekiel, son of man, I'm sending you to a most rebellious people. Israel, not the Amalekites, not the Philistines. Israel, he said, set your face like flint. So that's why sometimes I have a flinty look. Not the flint stones, but, <laughs> you know, because God wants the church to understand that this is serious. And when you read all the way. So, so we will hear people talk about, you know, this is New Testament judgment. And there are those today in the church, in certain part of the church, that they believe that the God of the New Testament is a different God from the Old Testament. Why would you believe such garbage and such lie? It's the same God. But instead of speedy judgment as it was under the New Testament because that was the law, under grace judgment still is present, but there is a day that God has no reserved to do that judgment. You don't want to wait until you get there. So I'm going to show you. As I showed you in the Old Testament, what was the main thing that we, all the scriptures that I show you from the New Te Old Testament, what was the main thing that Israel abandoned? Truth. Truth. God said there was no truth. They, they didn't, nobody was even crying out for it. Nobody asking about it. They completely abandoned it. I'm going to show you in the New Testament. So the first scripture we look at in Romans chapter 1. And in Romans chapter 1, I'm not going to read all of the verses that we looked at before. But in verse 24, therefore God gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their arts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Note verse 25, who exchange the truth of God for a lie. So you notice truth was what caused God to give them up to all uncleanness. Now in Romans chapter 2 and verse 8. But connecting, this is connected to chapter 1 flowing over. But I don't want to read all of that because we've already read that as I said. But if you look, you will see the connection coming over from chapter 2. And then we get to verse 8 and it's about those who are, are self-seeking. Self-seeking. And do not obey what? The truth. But obey unrighteousness, because if you're not following truth, if you're not seeking for truth, if you have no desire for truth, there is no middle ground. You're going to go for what is the opposite. It says, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Verse 9, tribulation and anguish and every soul of man who does, watch this, who does evil, and God is no respecter of person. So of who? Of the Jews first. Do you understand when it says Jews first what it means? 
That's God's covenant people by way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God said, I am not going to spare them if they abide, if they abandon the truth and do evil. They will be judged first. The Jews first and what? And also the Greek, which we come under that, Gentiles, right? Verse 10, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Verse 11, why is it so? For there is no partiality with God. That's why you never see me do it. You never see me do it. Me say, <laughs> I know we have visitors that don't understand much of Jamaica and, and, and sometimes not fool yourself. There are some people that you think don't know the, the, the link. The, there was, have you ever heard the story about, I think it was in Toronto it happened where a police officer pulled over a Jamaican guy. And when the officer pulled him over, he was speeding, come up to him. He decided that he was going to talk raw patwa to the officer to get away. So when the police officer comes up and says, Where you are, sir? Where you are? Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and talking, you know, and going on. And when the officer said, Do you know what I, why I pulled you? Where you are, sir? And going on. The officer right up this guy and said, Take this. <laughs> 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 now we know say, everything that he was saying, the officer no understood. So be careful. Be careful that you're going to criticize someone in patois and think they don't know what you're saying. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying that we need to understand that the reason why you will never see me showing partiality to anyone in here. Because notice when we finish, every Sunday, every Saturday, we finish yesterday about after 12 minutes to, to 1 or somewhere there. You know what time I walk out of here? What time we leave here yesterday? After 2. After 2. What time I reach home? So sometimes my wife says, you, 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 you can't do that because you're going to have to go back tomorrow to preach and stuff like that. We had two more sessions. You watch me. I stand here. And every Sunday, the line, sometimes the line go all the way up there. And I never treat anybody less. Every single person, I stand and I give you my full attention idea. You never see me showing no partiality because I'm representing God. When you see me, you're supposed to see what God's standard look like. And if any of you doing anything for me to show your partiality in Jamaica, they call it curry favor. I will take the curry off of you and put brown in and stew you. <laughs> and even though I'm not a great cook, I'll boil you. <laughs> don't, don't even try it because I, I am against it. So if, you, if you're trying to butter me up, giving me things for me to overlook certain things, I'll take it and I'll rebuke you and if you want it back, if it's something that I eat, I'll show you where I put down the heavy burden. <laughs> I'm serious. Such thing is not supposed to be among us as believers in Christ. Did you know that the Bible says you cannot have the faith of Jesus Christ and show partiality? That a poor man would come among you and you say to the poor man, sit down here. And the rich man come and you put the rich man up and say, you know, one rich man come in with rings and stuff. And he said, oh, you go up there. He said, no, you cannot. So if the poor man come first, and that's why I tell you, it's first come, first serve. We are not going to save no seed for nobody. The only persons we will save a seed for is our first time visitors. And after you visit one, two, three, you're no longer a visitor. So you better be on time to get a seed. Because by the time you get to the third visit, you know where the spoons are. You know where the sugar is. You know where the teacup is. And you know how to make yourself a cup of tea. No partiality. So some of you come from uh, 730. If, <laughs> if, if you want to be 
if you want to be in the, what they call this area, <laughs> you, you have to be early. <laughs> <laughs> now, there was something that was said about you, about Marlon. You remember? Yeah. You didn't hear? No, just a moment ago. No, 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 no. Oh. You forget. So there were those who were saying that we were saying that is, you remember? And so Marlon was outside and then Marlon come and Marlon always get the same seat. But I said, haven't you noticed that Marlon come early and he put down in Bible right there? So he, 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 he come and the Bible represent him while he's out there doing ushering and doing whatever he's doing. So he's not, it's not partiality. Because if you come in and you come and you put your bag and stuff like that, then by all right, you have been early and you should be sitting there. But if you come late... No partiality. God is against it. And if you're representing God, you should never let such thing be seen in your life. You treat everybody because love, love does that. I'm, I'm sorry to be messing up your Sunday. I soon finish. I'm going to show you one more passage and I'll stop and then we pick up next week. When we come back. How am I doing so far? It's good? All right. There is no partiality with God. So he's going to judge every single person that has done evil. And notice what puts you in the position to do evil. When you abandon truth. The next scripture I want to look at. I don't know if I will be able to finish it. But I'll look at it and I'll stop and pick up. And I have a couple more after this to lay this foundation. And then we're going to continue to build on it. And I'm, I'm going to show you something. Wow. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Why is the church in a backslidden state? And it needs to return to its rightful place. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ... And our gathering together to him. Note those words. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our gathering together to him. We ask you. I said this some time back. And I want to remind you of it. I was talking to a couple of brethren. Um from Jamaica, from, and it's, these are persons that, that are directly connected to the ministry in Jamaica. A couple of them in the U.S. It's, uh, one person from the, the, the U.K. And um, others were in Canada here. So we had a, a conference, a uh, WhatsApp thing, what, what you call it. And we're talking. And I was saying to them and reminding them, because I remember telling them in Jamaica from a, for a long time. I said, there are biblical prophecies that you will not see the literal fulfillment in Jamaica. You're not going to see the literal fulfillment in Canada. You're not going to see the literal fulfillment in the United States. You're not going to see it in certain parts of the world. You're going to see it based on what the scripture says. Certain parts of Europe and certain parts of the Middle East. But not because it's not literally happening where you are, you shouldn't pay attention to it. I told you from last year that you said this war that break out in Israel with Hamas and Israel, it's going to be completely different from all the other. And that's where many are going to get caught up in certain things. Because, we're going to, oh, it's, it, it has been, oh, there's always conflict in the Middle East. And, you know, it's another day. No, not this one. It started from October. It continues to excel. Ex you know what I'm saying? And the, 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 the supreme court in south africa 
file an injunction with the high courts in the, I think, the Netherlands to have Israel to uh, put a cease and this is order where they stop. And Israel said, <laughs> Israel, Israel is pressing on because Israel said, we are not going to stop. Am I saying that they're right? No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to show you, we need to look at something here because it's not just Israel trying to go after Hamas and Hamas going after Israel and there's other conflicts that is going to come about because Jesus said there's going to be wars and rumors of war. Have you paid attention that in the last few days, Iran, Iran fired missiles in Pakistan and a few other countries. Pakistan retaliated and fired back missiles, killing people. So it is me. And it's on the verge, on the edge of something that is going to continue to happen and continue and continue and spread and affect other nations to the point where it's going to be in fulfillment of what Jesus says. So don't just sit back and say, well, we're in Canada. Canada is a clean, nice country. You know, we're good. Notice our gathering together to him. So I said this, and I'm going to say it again. I'm not making it up. It's right in front of you. Notice our gathering together with him. When Jesus visible, visible bodily return takes place, where do you think his body is going to appear? In Israel. So we, we who are in Canada, how are we going to see him? Israel far. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> it's far. It's, it's far away. So you cannot stay in Canada and look into Israel. So how are, we, how are the believers in Africa going to see him? How are the believers in, the, in Europe and Europe? We are going to be gathered. We're going to be collected by the Holy Spirit. Angels are going to be involved in it also. And we're going to come where he is. So while certain things is not manifesting in Canada, don't discard it. Pay attention to the sign and let it keep you in focus, knowing that this is a sign that Jesus said would happen. So therefore, his coming is a little closer. Don't relax. Don't lose focus. Don't, don't get caught up. Don't stay. I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. There is an ongoing war with Russia and the Ukraine. It is going to spread out because Russia is not backing off because the president is too proud. He's like Nebuchadnezzar. So he's going to continue to do what he do until it spill over and other nations are going to get involved. And God speak about these things. So we see these little things. Pay attention to them because they are signs. I don't want to talk about signs now, but I just want you to understand what he says. Our gathering together to him. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or letter, by letter, as if from us, the apostles, as though the day of Christ had come. It has not come yet. Because when it comes, notice, we will be gathered to him. So you will not need anybody, Sister Kim, to tell you, Hello, did you know that Jesus came? Um, yes, where is he? Oh, he's in it. Oh, I need to book a ticket. <laughs> I need to go on a hairline. No, 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 no. Anywhere you are, you don't need no plane ticket. You will be transported. Oh, my God. There are evidence in the scripture that the spirit transport persons. In the New Testament, Philip. So you have, a, you, you have an example of it to understand that right now in this room, if, 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 that is if, because Jesus is not coming today, I promise you. He's coming, but not today. But if he should be coming today, and all of us in this room now are born again, we're saved, and we're expecting that. If I was not ready, <laughs> and a fool myself, you would be taken out. I wouldn't even be aware of whatever. I'm still preaching and going on. And you're gone. You're gone. And your body is going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. It looks like the same body, but it's a body without blood. 
Wow. 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 When you can say amen, wow. Not to be soon shaken or troubled, but watch this. Let no one deceive you by any means. That Watch this. For that day, that day, which day? The day of the Lord coming and we're gathered to him. He said, that day will not come unless that falling away. Notice, that falling away. The falling away comes first. What is the falling away? Have you ever heard, the, it in, you read it in the scripture about wheat and tears? You also read about chaff and, right? So the falling away is God allowing it to happen. All the hypocrites that is pretending. You see all this ministry where the people come and pretend? The falling away, you're going to see those who are pretenders fall away. It's the one that are truly saved is going to endure to the end. The ones that are pretenders will not endure the things that will be coming up on the earth. They're going to fall away. And God says his son will not come back until the falling away takes place. Because it's where God is separating the child from the wheat. Separating the tears from the wheat. So make sure... Make sure that when the falling away is taking place, you are the one that is gathered into the barn. That's why we see a lot of pastors falling away. We see bishops. We see the Catholic church being exposed. Because this church that has pretended to represent Christ, Christ said, no, you're not of me. So he started to expose Pope. He started to expose bishops and cardinals and fathers and priests. The Catholic church has been exposed big time in Canada. The discovery of the hundreds of bodies of the aboriginal people that the Catholic Church took. Took them away from their identity. Took them away. Church, you know. And God said, you think I'm going to cover up anything for you? Find it. Find it. Look, this is what the church has been doing in my name. But I am not for it. It, it has lost its credibility in a lot of places in the world. And it doesn't matter what the Pope is doing. It will never be restored. God is judging the Methodist church. God is judging New Testament church of God. God is judging prophecy church. God is judging everything. Because everything that is not of him must fall away. And then, then the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposes and exists, watch this, and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God. Throws, watch this, showing himself to that he is God. Do you, listen, do you not remember, brethren, that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is remaining. That he may be revealed in his own time. Why? For the mystery of lawlessness. The mystery of wickedness is already at work. Is already. Get that. Is already at work. Only he who now restrains and will do until he is taken out of the way. Verse 8. And then the lawless one, the lawless one, will be revealed in person, in flesh. There's going to be an incarnation. Because Satan is copying God. God was incarnated in the person of Jesus. He, at the end of the age, he's going to do an incarnation. Satan is no longer going to be hidden as just a mere spirit. There's going to be a bodily manifestation of him. And he says that there the lawless one will be revealed. Watch this. But it's going to be short. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy him once and for all with the brightness of what? His coming. Wow. The coming of, watch this. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of? So you notice who he's representing? Satan reincarnating himself in the form of a body, a person, is of working of Satan. With all power and signs. And notice, notice, people are going to see wonders. They're going to see signs. But it's a 
Lie. What is Satan doing? Satan is going to do something at the end of the age. He's going to do a last assault, a final assault, and he's going to intensify it. And according to the scriptures, God is going to allow the saints, even for a brief moment, to, they're not going to have any power. Mm -hmm, no. So that's why the church make up the rapture gospel. Because the rapture is bogus. Read in Daniel chapter 7, chapter 8, all the way down. You see that for a time, he's going to overpower the saints. But after a while, the saints again is going to take the kingdom. And they're going to now demonstrate. So God is doing that for what reason? What reason? It's not for you to be afraid. Because the people who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And God is doing all of this to show off one thing that I have been saying over and over and over and over. And I don't know how he's listening. And I'm not going to say it now, but I have been saying it over and over and over. Listen. He said, he said, and with all unrighteousness, watch this, deception among those who perish. Because they, why are they perishing? Because they did not receive the love of the, why are they perishing? Because they did not receive the love of the, and they, watch this, that they might be saved. And watch this, verse 11 says, for this reason God will send, send them strong Delusion, and I believe that's manifesting in the present church right now. God sending them strong delusion because they do not want the truth that they should believe what? Because if you don't want the truth, what you're going to get, there's no neutral ground here. It's a lie, and the lie is going to destroy you. Verse 12, that they all make, watch this, be condemned who did not believe what? Why is it that I speak the truth and speak it only at all times, even sometimes when you think I'm rough and I'm harsh? Because only the truth will save you. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 13, I soon finish. But we who, watch this, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. We, the apostles, are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren. Beloved by the Lord. Because God from the beginning chose you for what? Salvation. For salvation through sanctification. And what does the sanctification look like? By the Spirit and belief in what? The truth. Verse 14. To which he called you by our gospel, by our preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, I'm finishing right here. Therefore, brethren, therefore, brethren, therefore, brethren, and do what? All the traditions. This is the only time tradition is good. All the traditions which you were taught from the word, whether by word or our epistle, our letters. Verse 16, now may our Lord, and I'm pronouncing the same thing on you in this room today if you will receive it. I said, I am pronouncing the same thing in the, upon you in this room today if you will receive it. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and what? And good hope by grace. Do what? Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. Let me pronounce it upon you again. Those of you that are watching, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself 
and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace. Comfort your hearts. Comfort your hearts. Establish you. Establish you in every good word and works. God bless you. I believe that was for me, right? The clap that they give a while ago. You hear about, hold on, 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 hold on. Don't clap yet until you get understanding here. Yeah? I hear a few little scatter something. Plop, 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 plop. Like when Manafata. <laughs> I don't need for you to necessarily clap me. I want you to clap for the word, for God. And if you did that for God a while ago, mm -mm, not acceptable. I want you to clap to honor God and his word and do it better than that. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for your word. Your word keeps us in the order that you want us to be. That when you return, wherever we are, we will be gathered to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand. Those of you that are... Sitting, please stand with me as we dismiss. So I stopped to 17. What time did I start? <laughs> Notice how the Spirit directed the meeting this morning. Because most time we would pray for the sick even after... But I said, I want the spirit to just have his way. We're still getting some requests. Uh, wow. Marcia Chislam from England, London, England, healing from diabetes and strokes. Evan Dennis, Poland. Poland, wow. Cataract in both eyes. Uh, Sadie, I think this is our Sadie, her niece in America, cancer. And um, Nicola, high blood pressure. I don't have the country that this person is sending the request. Poland, wow. I know by radio we're reaching over 154 nations. And so it's amazing what God is doing using a Jamaican that my grammar is not always gram. <laughs> and, um, but it's the spirit. It's the anointing that is doing the work. Because even as um, Sister... Uh, Nordia says, her mom says, I didn't even reach out to ask pastor to pray for me yet. And she got healed. The anointing. And once they're open to the spirit, it's the spirit that does the job. I'm just a vessel. So Father, before we walk out of this room today, I lift these requests up to you, Lord. It's not my name that is on the line. It's your name. Father, this person that has cancer, I know that you are the God who is greater than cancer. I decree and declare right now that the cells that are out of control because of the virus that has attacked the body, I speak order to the body. I command the cells to get back in order. I rebuke the spirit of death that works behind cancer. And Father, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that her health is being restored. Father, this person in Poland with cataract in both eyes, I speak to the retina. I speak to the pupils. I speak to the veins that are constricting behind the eyes that the blood cannot 
free flow freely and whatever side effects that has come as a result of the cataract I command it to be reversed right now father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I thank you that the word doesn't need a passport to go to Poland the word doesn't need an airplane to go to Poland your word is already there as it is here and so right now I give angels an assignment to see to it that this word come to pass father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I thank you for this person Lord that has high blood pressure and Father, experiencing pain in their body, I command the blood pressure to be regulated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command order in your body. And Father, whatever stress or whatever it is that is contributing to that, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the peace of God that passes all human understanding will flood their body right now and their pressure will, high blood pressure will come down, be regulated, whatever the normal number is. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus, 120 over 80 or whatever it is, Father, let it be right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I remember that day in Jamaica when I prayed for that woman that struggled with high blood pressure for so long. And the very moment I prayed for her, she got up and she walked out of the meeting and she went down to the doctor's office and she said, Pastor, I went to check my pressure and my pressure is normal after so many months. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for normal, normal blood pressure right now for this person. Nicole, in the name of the Lord Jesus, so be it. The Lord Jesus makes you whole. And Father, thank you for cancer being destroyed, cataract being destroyed. This person, Father, with diabetes, I command the pancreas to be restored. I command the pancreas to come alive again, produce the insulin that the body needs to break down the sugar in it. In the name of Jesus, pancreas, hear the word of the Lord. Live again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you for a breakthrough in the life of Chantel. In the name of Jesus and for her daughter, Father, wherever they're watching from, I thank you for the word reaching them right now. We believe. And Father, as I rip these papers up, which represent them, represent the problem, represent the condition, so it is that cancer is being destroyed. So it is that diabetes is being destroyed. Cataract is being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe it, Father, that it is so, it is so, it is so. And Father... We come in agreement again with Ruth, Ruth Sa, concerning her mom in the hospital. That the doctors are, have been telling them that they need, they need to put her on a ventilator. And there is a possibility that if they put her on the ventilator that she might not live. But Father, you are the living God. You are a God that is resurrection. And Father, even when death touch our body, and if our purpose is not yet fulfilled, you will call Lazarus back from the grave. You will raise Jairus' daughter. You will raise the widow woman's son. You are the same God. So Father, right now, we cancel debt. We cancel debt. We cancel debt. We cancel debt in the name of Jesus. Father, I command the cancer in her blood to be destroyed. I speak to her heart and I command her heart to be restored. I command her kidneys to be restored and function to the normal so that it's supposed to function. Father, I command in the name of Jesus, brand new kidneys for Bev Beverly Smith. I command brand new kidneys for Carleen Smith. And whoever else, Father, is believing, I come in agreement right now for them. And Lord, I thank you for healing people in this room today. And it will manifest and bring glory to your name. And Father, as we leave this room, I thank you for the truth of your word. May your truth guide our every thought. May your truth guide our speech. May your truth guide our actions. And as the psalmist David said, let the words of my mouth... And the meditation of my heart, my mind, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray that this will be true for us because your spirit lives in us. Therefore, we can trust the spirit to keep us in alignment with what is truth because he is the spirit of truth. You are the God of truth. Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Father, truth is something that is no longer really known in the present world today. 
and it's no longer acceptable. Though we say we want to hear the truth, when it is told, we are vilified and put aside. And it's sometimes, Father, even when truth is spoken, it is now labeled as, labeled as aid speech. But Father, I know that if I have to die for the truth, I am ready, I am willing, because that's what matters. And so, Father, I thank you for truth prevailing over lies. Satan is a liar. He has lied to many of us even about our birth. He has lied to us about our worth. He has lied to us about our value and who we are as a person. But Father, today truth has prevailed. Many today that come in this room, they're leaving with this knowing that even if they have not discovered their purpose yet, I was born for a, I was born for a cause. I was born for a cause. I am 60. I don't understand it yet, but I will not give up. I will not lay down and die. I was born for a cause. And even if I, have to be, if I have to fulfill it at 61, 65, 70, I will not die until I fulfill my purpose. So, Father, I bless your people. I bless your people because you have already blessed them. And I pray, Father, only what is good, what is right for you from this day forward and for the rest of your life. And as long as you continue to put trust in God, only what is good and what is right will be your portion. Even though evil show up, because God is for you, the evil cannot prevail and it cannot overcome. So Father, thank you for who you are and what you are about and what you're doing and how you're doing it. I give you all the praise and I commend your people to you one more time to the word of your grace and may grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a week like you have never had before. A ridiculous, unusual, strange, miraculous, graceful week. Look for it on purpose. Expect it. Because God has already willed it for you. Have a head-on collision with it. Have a head-on collision with your miracle. Have a head-on collision with your healing. Have a head-on collision with your breakthrough. Have a head-on collision with everything that is good and everything that is right. I love you. I love you. I really do. And I bless you. And God's willing, we will regroup on Sunday as I continue to dispense this word that the Holy Spirit gave me from last year. For you to also test yourself to make sure that you're not a part of the backslidden church. And if you see yourself in any way connected to anything, you now know what you need to repent of. And get back in alignment with only what is truth. I love you. I bless you. And the final thing that I will ask you to do today, the final thing. I'm going to ask you to turn to the left and to the right and in front of you and behind you and give the person a hug and tell them this is from pastor. And then give them yours. Love you.